Commissioner Brooks, good to see you. It's good to see you as well, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you are always welcome in Tarrant County. It's great to be here. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to testify on uh, indigent health care and uh, delivery models. As I sit here surrounded by two of my favorite doctors, I, I feel somewhat ill-equipped to uh, uh, speak as uh, technically on the subject as they can and will do. However, having grown up in a family that included eight physicians, me being the one who got away <laughs> and <coughs> somehow ended up uh, in uh, health care policy uh, much as you did, Mr. Chairman. I know you understand. Uh, let me give you a little bit of, of my background so that I can at least speak with a little bit of credibility <coughs> on these issues. Thank you, Commissioner. Please do give me that. My dad practiced medicine in Fort Worth, inner city Fort Worth, for over 50 years. He practiced medicine when uh, African American physicians could only admit their patients to the basement of the old St. Joseph Hospital located directly across the street from where we sit. During those years, the state nor the federal government had any conception of medically underserved communities. Not only did they have no programs for it, they had no term for it. In my professional capacity, I chair the Health Reform Subcommittee for the National Association of Counties. So I helped to shape uh, the new health care bill under which we are currently operating. I have been appointed by the Secretary of HHS to HRSA's committee, uh, negotiated rulemaking committee, which is charged with rewriting the rules on how medically underserved areas and uh, populations and health professional shortage areas are designated. Now this has a tremendous impact for local communities because those rules determine where federally qualified health centers can be located and how the National Medical Service Corps can be deployed in local communities. I am also one of the two liaisons from the Tarrant County Commissioner's Court to the John Peter Smith uh, Health Network and to the Tarrant County Public Health Department. You don't have any time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the, one of the local organizers and chairman of the Nurse Family uh, Partnership Program and I serve on its statewide board. In addition, I'm involved in various activities to uh, mitigate the impact of health disparities among communities of color and to deal with uh, infant mortality, which is an intractable problem in Fort Worth, Tarrant County, Texas. JPS Health Network is the flagship of the delivery of indigent health care in Tarrant County. And as I said to the uh, HRSA committee on which I serve, as far as I'm concerned, there is no health care in America without the safety net hospitals that our county hospital districts uh, operate. And is that the, the regional HRSA committee? This is a national, national person person. committee. Just, this is a national committee and Texas I... Texas is well represented. Texas has two representatives on this committee. 
uh, me and Jose Camacho, who chairs the uh, state uh, committee that uh, uh, community health centers uh, belong to. Um, there is no health care, no effective health care without the local safety net hospitals. Uh, JPS Health Network is a fine example of one of those hospital systems. In addition to our um, central hospital in which we're now seated, there are 44 community um, health centers, 26 of them being comprehensive community health centers, and 18 being school-based clinics. Uh, so we're very interested in how uh, the new Health Care Reform Act and various things that the State Health and Human Services Commission are about to get into, well, how those will affect the delivery of local health care. And I have said to our CEO, uh, Robert Early, from whom you heard earlier, that uh, JPS and other county hospitals have to begin to look at themselves so that we will know who we intend to be in a fully insured environment, which both you and I firmly believe uh, will happen under the new uh, Patient Protection Act. <clears throat> but that aside, um, the Texas Health and Human Services Commission is moving forward with plans to publish for <coughs> public comment a series of draft Medicaid managed care requests for proposals. <coughs> These requests for proposals are expected to be released this fall. The scope of the draft RFPs will include provisions for the six Medicaid managed care expansion initiatives included in the, in the agency's legislative appropriations request and that will expand Medicaid managed care organization MCO models from current service delivery areas to include surrounding contiguous counties. It will roll out the Medicaid managed care MCO model into South Texas. It will replace the existing Medicaid primary care case well, management, replace the existing Medicaid primary care case management care delivery model with a capitated exclusive provider organization delivery model. It will eliminate the hospital carve-out model of Medicaid managed care currently in place. The, an, an additional RFP will capitate dental and, and vendor drug services. Uh, it will open for forbid all Medicaid managed care initiatives in all markets except for the new Star Plus initiative underway in Dallas and Fort Worth markets. One of the driving budget interests in having more Medicaid managed care in Texas is that Medicaid managed care premiums are subject to a significant state premium tax which generates millions of dollars in revenue to the state. The unintended consequences of doing those above stated things at, are that as medical services are capitated, the ability to claim federal UPL funds goes away, and this will adversely impact both private and public hospitals. In addition, as public hospitals lose their UPL payments, their willingness and ability to fund the Medicaid disproportionate chair program statewide is threatened. As you know, Mr. Chairman, one of the essential legs to disproportionate chair funding in Texas comes from 
so-called transferring hospitals, which put up local uh, tax dollars to pull down the federal map. What, what we are arguing is that if UPL dollars go away, then DISPRO funds will then be in danger because our ability to generate local tax dollars to trigger the federal match will be impaired. <clears throat> Most Texas safety net hospitals rely on a combination of Medicaid payment methodologies including Medicaid contracted HMO payments, traditional Medicaid fee-for-service payments which are now reduced 38 percent below allowable cost uh, for state budget limits. Uh, we also rely on Medicaid disproportionate share payments and me Medicaid supplemental payments referred to as Medicaid upper payment limit funds. UPL fun funding is basically available to fill the difference between what Texas hospitals could receive using the Medicaid reimbursement form formulas versus what Texas traditionally pays hospitals. The availability of the disproportionate share and UPL funds are critical to the survival of most safety net hospitals. With the exception of some state funding for children's hospitals, U UPL payments, the state is relying on local governments and not state collected general revenue to finance the disproportionate share and UPL funding. It is important that both of these sources of payments be maintained and not compromised. Medicaid is jointly funded by state and federal funds. To match federal funds, the state controller certifies the CMS that state funds are currently on deposit to match the requested federal funds. In Texas, at least one-third of the state's share of Medicaid funds paid to private hospitals and clinics are actually financed with local government tax funds that are then transferred to the state, which the state uses to claim the federal funds. These local governments, in an effort to support their local safety net hospitals, are putting up their local tax funds to transfer to the state in order for the hospitals to receive a more reasonable, reasonable level of reimbursement than what the state has been willing or able to finance from its sources of revenue. We ask that uh, HHS in its uh, new regulations and CMS first do no harm to the local safety net, take into consideration what impacts their changes to funding methodologies will have on the local safety net hospitals and our ability to continue to generate local tax dollars to uh, pull down federal matches and uh, be mindful of the critical critical posi uh, position that uh, safety net hospitals uh, occupy in Texas. Uh, Robert Early would, would be upset if I did not tell you that the economic downturn has had a tremendous impact on JPS, uh, which translates into 100,000 new patient encounters in just this past year alone. It translates into overutilization of our emergency room by patients who do not have a medical home. Uh, and that fully 29% of our county's population is served by our local safety net hospital. JPS Health Network. I will stop there and give my colleagues a chance to weigh in. Um, thank you for your time. Well, thank you, uh, Next, we 